We were Falcor's first fully remote science team. None of the science team could actually be on board the ship. This came about uh, sort of in an interesting way because of COVID-19. We had to figure out how to be able to communicate with the ship regularly. But what really surprised me was, you know, that, that actually turned to an, into a real advantage, the fact that so many scientists around the world were, were in lockdown. We went to the Queensland Plateau, a large plateau out in the Coral Sea Marine Park. It's one of the largest marine reserves on Earth. And so the aim of the expedition was, number one, to do a whole lot of multi-beam mapping to understand the, the very detailed shape of the seafloor. The multi-beam maps are really a very, very crucial first step in understanding um, the geologic evolution of these systems. And this gives us more information about how ice sheets have behaved in the past, how stable or unstable they might be in the future uh, in response to um, global warming. Because of course in the ocean nothing happens in isolation. Everything is connected both horizontally and vertically. So now having this extra layer of knowledge is going to be incredibly useful for any future management. Remote sensing technologies like uh, multi-beam sonar, that's great in itself, but it's another thing to actually put a camera there, and especially something as good as the Sebastian, where I do feel like I'm, I'm there on the seafloor. One of my favourite memories, my first dive, uh, a big squid swam across the screen, and I was like, oh, this is a good start. And we came upon this red blob, and it was a sea cucumber. It flew up and used its tentacles to fly around and to, to swim away. It's just been exciting and I've got no other work done during this time because I've spent my days glued to the screen and waiting to see what would come up next. Probably one of the most uh, standout for me is just the number of chambered Nautilus that we've seen. I stop for Nautilus. You know, they say stop for rainbows, I, say, I stop for Nautilus. There were quite a few species that we didn't expect would occur here. So we call that range extensions, when we see something that we know occurs somewhere else, but we've never seen it here before. The chats, that's been fascinating, right? Suddenly I'm out there with 100 experts. For everybody, it was just a really interesting experience. I think it's something that you know, really should be a, a model of, of how to do this type of science um, in the future. Patrick, he's from Belgium, and he's a slit snail expert. Like, I don't even know what a slit snail is, but he's just said, you've just found the first slit snail in the Coral Sea. You know, he's over the moon. There were things that I've never seen before. Geomorphic features, I have no clue what they are. Good morning, everybody, and we are now live. What is most appealing about your work at sea? For me, it has to be the people and uh, being able to facilitate uh, their endeavors to peel back what we don't know of the ocean floor is pretty rewarding. Everything in the world that's alive is basically forms a tapestry that ultimately holds us. And I think it's important to think about that because every time you lose something, you lose a thread out of the tapestry that ultimately supports us humans. The research vessel Falcor was one of the few research ships in the world that were able to operate through this crisis. And I, I think the Schmidt Ocean Institute have, have set a very, very high bar. This is the bar we need to work to, towards in the future. I guess the big message there is that the science must continue.